Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I am unboxing Merchant's Cove. And, and as usual, my unboxings come along with a conversation free of charge that I don't know where it's going at all. Genuinely, I don't even know what I'm starting with today. But before we do, I'm going to just switch to a top shot up there because I have a beautifully centered cup of coffee just right over here. Just beautifully, beautifully ready to go. And, and I'm just going to take a sip of that to start things off. And then to the side. So, Merchant's Cove. Merchant's Cove is a game that I am very excited about. I've been hearing very good things about this from, well, people who've had the opportunity to play it. And this is one that is going to be an asymmetric game that is going to obviously be compared to Root by, well, anyone and everyone. It's going to be compared to Root, to Vast. Possibly more so to Vast because this is definitely not a war game, but Vast also at the same time is a dungeon crawler, so not a dungeon crawler either. And nor is it a game that, you know, you have to get to a certain number of points first and then that player wins. Rather, it is a game where you're going to be playing for three rounds, whoever has the most gold wins, and the players are merchants trying to sell their wares. But, and this is the, the giant butt part, which is going to be while they're trying to sell their wares, the reason for those comparisons to, to Root and to Vast and to whatever is going to be because this is a very asymmetric game. This is a game in which every player has their own way, their own mechanisms as to how they play the game compared to others. And wow, is there a lot of goodness in this box. I don't know what's going on over here at all. Let's just go through it together. Now, so Mercer's Cove is one that, I mean, first of all, the, the art, excuse the crackling. Let's just give it a second while we pull those out those those are particularly crackly sheets now the art is going to be by the miko which is or i think it's i think it's the micho i i regularly mispronounce it because well it's m-i-c-o which to me says miko but you know it's not the miko so it's i believe it's the micho i think i could be wrong we have the rule book here standard rule book fair is going to be me checking to see just how long and complicated this rule book looks does it cover all the individual players, or is there a separate guide? Is it giving us... I mean, I want to see if this rulebook is giving us the general structure, which it looks like it is. This does not look like it's giving us the individual characters, not that I can see. I could be mistaken, but it doesn't seem like there's any specific breakup. It looks like this is the general war, the general phasing of the game. That said, the general phasing of the game does look pretty simple. This is a fairly short rulebook, all things considered. So I, I remain optimistic, although we have the rancher, the oracle, the innkeeper... In addition to the Pirate Captain, the Chronomancer, I don't remember all the names of the various roles. But let's go ahead and pull these out and go through it. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a mess to deal with. Okay, so we have over here, we have this thingy-majiggy over here with their wooden tokens over here. Let's take a look at some of these wooden tokens. And these are going to be some of these guys. Now, by the way, if you missed it, I have today on the channel, earlier today, I threw up, a, I should say earlier today, depending on whether I properly got this cut and edited in time, because... Well, right now, when I'm filming this, it's Wednesday evening, and tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have a video with Rena, an interview with Rena going up on the channel, and if I did things right, then that means earlier today for you, this is going up as confusing. Rena went up earlier today, and this is going up, well, now. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. Additionally, if I follow things correctly, I believe Quacklope will also have an unboxing of this exact game on his channel that he launched earlier today, so make sure to check that out as well. I, I assume his is much funnier than mine, because because he's funny, and I like him. But anyways, we got these these gems over here, so make sure to check that out too. Also, his will be prettier, let's be honest. Mine will cover the, the pieces, and mine will probably be a weirder, wackier conversation, but all things considered, it will be that. So, we got that, we got that, we got another bag full of stuff that's going to crackle. This is not going to crackle quite as much, seemingly. Let's go ahead and grab this. I actually ordered a new knife in Amazon, so I wanted a little uh, purchasing spree where I have had this knife for a long time that has not been doing the job the way I want it to. And so I went on Amazon, and when I say spree, I don't mean spree, I bought a $12 knife, but I, I saved like 30 different knives in my browser tab. So I figure if I, like, if I like doing unboxings, then I want my knives to have a little more character and better than this thing over here, which this is a really old knife, probably needs to be sharpened. I don't remember even where I got this from. I've also been using, let me just grab it for a second. I've also been using this box cutter knife as my default go-to, but again, no character, and again, I don't know where I got it from. Although, do they both say Husky? No, this is Buck and this is Husky. Don't know what they are from. Buck, Whittaker, and Husky are going to be the knives over here. But both of those kind of just turned up at some point in my life. I don't know where they came from. I don't remember buying them. I don't think I would have bought them. They don't look like knives that are particularly appealing. So I went on Amazon, saved a few knives, including a 
a Batman knife, by the way. There's actually a knife that's like a little batarang where the two blades swing out. Very cool. For the low price of $15, it's yours. Didn't look as functional all that, so I didn't get that one. Instead, I got, I think these are the Chronomancer tiles. These are the Chronomancer tiles, if I recall correctly. It's been a while since I watched a video on Merchant's Cove. This is one that I never had the opportunity to play myself. This is a pre-content creation for myself. We have this. Now, this looks like I should be punching it because, I mean, it's got these punchable things, but it's also cardboard. So we have punched cardboard, which means I'm baffled. I'm definitely not going to throw it out. Probably is something you throw out. I don't know. And then we have miniatures. So these are going to be the first miniatures ever made based on sculpts or art by the Miko. Now, Endless Winter did this as well, if I'm not mistaken. What do we have over here? Let's just call ahead and hold this up over here. So Endless Winter did this as well, where they had uh, sculpts from the art by the Miko. Now, I haven't seen those actual sculpts past the uh, Kickstarter prototype they sent out, but I think they are better. I think. I could be wrong. I'm just going by size alone. These ones don't seem to give you the level of size you'd want for the detail you'd want. So if you go ahead and take a look at this, hopefully it, hopefully it focuses over there. Yeah, these are definitely smaller than the ones in the Endless Winter campaign, which gives for less detail, covers the rolls, does the job, no real complaints, but I think the, I am looking forward to the Endless Winter miniatures. Don't get me wrong, it's not meant to be anything about this game. The game itself looks great. I mean, well, looks great. I haven't played this one, so I can't tell you anything past looks. We have a deck of cards over here that look all on their lonesome. Don't know what's going on there. We have the Dragon Island Festival. This module, oh, it's a module, so that's probably going to be something Kickstarter exclusive. Don't know what they're doing over here. The art looks great because, well, I mean, look at that. Look at the chronomancer. I think this is the chronomancer, I believe, and his assistant. Maybe it says it. It does not say it. So, don't know what's going on with these festival cards. We'll figure it out soon. Let's go through the rest of the components. Now, I didn't prepare any particular ramble. I rarely do. I actually, I usually walk into my ramblings with one thing I want to talk about. And then from there, the conversation just tends to drift because I, I can pretty much drift wherever I want. It's only my uh, dedication to not sounding like a complete whatever that I don't com I don't drift in all my reviews or Kickstarter coverage as much as I normally would. I, I, I tend to just rattle on. In fact, my last unboxing, I believe I was in the middle of a tangent about Joffrey and Game of Thrones and how he's a bit of a psychopath. I never really came back for it because I got distracted by shiny board game bits and then just never came back. This is going to be a handful of, of meeples, just, you know, pretty little meeples. Don't really know what's going on over there, but they are pretty looking. And I actually, you know what I have coming? Again, just random thoughts. I have coming a, a Marvel Champions insert that I'm really looking forward to. I just got all my Marvel Champions stuff today. I got the, the Guardians of the Galaxy expansion, the, the Red Skull campaign expansion. I finally got a bunch of expansions for Marvel Champions because Marvel Champions is a game I love. This is a spinner that will... Whoop, there we go. You see, that's a good spin over there. Let's do it one more time. Woohoo! That's a beautiful spinner. Now, I will note this is the part where we start going in a circle in a sense because, I mean, a spinner is not, a, a, it's not something you really think about when you think about modern board game design to have a spinner. And yet we have a spinner. But it's amazing what you can get away with if you actually incorporate something that, you know, like, like this in a system or in, a, in an age that we like these kinds of things. Now, I feel... Oh boy, oh boy, here we go. Here we go. I just found all the booklets, okay, not. So we have over here these chests over here. Don't know who these are for, which particular player or whatnot they're for. But we're going to go ahead and push this off the side and we will figure out how to box everything up properly later. This is not going to be a how to box situation because, well, I'd have to know what I'm doing in order to even attempt that. But I will go ahead and put this back like so. This like so. We'll eventually get this right. I like how they have these nice little stands to ensure that your box is not damaged when it can't actually close. And let's go ahead and look through some of these components over here. Let's move this over here like so and go through some of these. And I think, I think I, well, I'll put those miniatures back soon. So we have Merchant's Cove, the captain. So it looks like these handy dandy guides that cover each player. The captain is a single sheet. A single, am I missing something here? No, it's going to be a single sheet that covers the unique aspects of the captain. That's awesome. If they can do that for all of these, whoa, this game is light on rules. I love it. I love it. When light on rules is obviously relative. I mean, it's not going to be light on rules, but compared to what I would expect for something that has four asymmetric factions, having a single guide for each of these separate too, which is beautiful. This is something I mean, Genuinely, I, I think Root should absolutely... Do we have five expand We have five in the base game. We have the Captain, the Blacksmith, the Alchemist, the Peddler, and the Chronomancer. So that was that. That's five, right? Yeah, that's five in the base game, plus three expansions, the Rancher, the Oracle, and the Innkeeper. I wonder if these are one each or two each. We'll find out soon. 
So we have over here, again, just one each. This is very, very impressive. One sheet of paper for each of these. So yeah, uh, I remember hearing a story once about you know, how everything's relative. I heard a story from someone who they were behind this lady at Target who was returning Pandemic, okay? And the reason they were, they were, they were in the middle of returning something themselves and they were, this lady was returning Pandemic and they saw, they, 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 she was at the counter, she's like saying, I'm returning this game. And the person's like, what's wrong with this? She's like, it's not a game. This, this thing has like six pages of rules. That's, that's work. This is not a game. I wanted a game my kids could play. This is not something at all. Now, to those of you who, oh my gosh, look at this. To those of you who are familiar with games like Merchant's Cove, or if you're watching this unboxing at all, there's a decent chance that you're like, well, Pandemic is a fairly simple game, but everything's relative. If you're expecting a game that has one sheet of rules and no complexity, then having a complex set of interactions, however simple it may be in comparison to another thing, well, everything is relative after all. It's gonna be coffee time here. So, this is gonna be the board from Merchant's Cove mostly fits on that top cam over there, so we'll slide it back and forth a few times so you can see what's going on here. Does not look overwhelming in size, although obviously it depends what else you have set up on the table around it. And when it comes to board design, sometimes a game can be incredibly overwhelming just because of how much setup goes on around the table. Uh, in this case, it looks on the lighter side, but we'll see how it goes. So, Merchant's Cove. So we have the Chronomancer over here. I recall, correct, if I recall, this is the Chronomancer's Guide. You're going to be putting sheets over here. The Assistant will move around. The Chronomancer will follow, generating resources in their own little system. I don't remember how the Merchant, I think this is the, the Blacksmith. I don't remember how the Blacksmith operates. Something to do with dice, evidently. So, I like dice-based systems in general. The Merchant, I don't remember how they operate. The Captain, I believe, was either pirating vessels or something to do with moving around. Was it Rondell-like? I don't remember if it was Rondell-like or something else. Again, keep in mind, it's been a long time since I looked at actual gameplay of how this this game works and then what's that last one we have I'm forgetting already we have the peddler we have the peddler is this the peddler maybe it's the peddler the alchemist this must be the alchemist so the alchemist lab over here where things will you know go oh if I recall correctly this one had something that was like potion explosion if I, if I recall something with marbles I remember watching the um who did that video was it Rado? No, Tantrum House. I think Tantrum House had the video where they went through like an overview of the game and whatnot. I think they covered this, this aspect over here. That's mostly going to be what I remember for that. And that's going to be your base game of, of well, of this game, of Merchant's Cove. We're going to put those miniatures back. We're going to close this off. I will go through these steps of taking care of that later. Tonight, actually, by the way, for myself, tonight, what I'm doing tonight, after this, well, after this, well, after, directly after this, I'm filming my review for Monster Hunter World. So that's going to be going up well, next week sometime, so we'll find out what's going on there. Uh, past that, I will be, at some point I'll be doing a play of this, not that, between Primal and Monster Hunter World, just because it's been asked for enough that I, I feel I, I kind of have to. And I wasn't planning on it originally, I was planning on doing a play of this, not that, when the retail copies came, but I will be doing a play of this, not that, now, because enough people asked for it. And then separately from that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back. Uh, tonight I will be doing, so after this I'm doing Monster Hunter World, tonight I will be watching Birds of Prey. So basically, I am mostly through the DC universe. I just finished Zack Snyder's, it's funny, because I wasn't planning on doing this, but my last unboxing I talked all about Marvel and the Marvel universe, because I, you know, was watching that, or, yeah, it was Marvel. But now I'm currently up to, let me move this somewhere here. Now I'm currently in the middle of the DC Universe, where we left off as we had last watched Aquaman, and then I kind of restarted the DC Universe from the beginning to get caught up. I think Aquaman's the last thing we watched uh, chronologically. And in that DC Universe, I started again, wanted to get to the Snyder Cut, we just finished the Snyder Cut, then we finished, we rewatched Aquaman, which Aquaman I think is... I want to say Aquaman is the most rewatchable of the DC Universe. Wonder Woman's good. It is good. But I honestly don't... I'm not that entertained by it. I think it has a solid start, a weak middle, some parts of the middle are okay, but a little bit of a weak end. Wasn't overly impressed by it. Aquaman I really enjoyed. A little crazy. And by a little crazy, I mean it's a lot crazy. But if you can't get some Jason Momoa into your life... By the way, now I'm realizing crossovers. We had Game of Thrones last time. Now we're talking about Jason Momoa from Game of Thrones. The best part of Game of Thrones by far. This is going to be the Innkeeper expansion. Let's see what we got over here. So Jason Momoa is immensely entertaining. Absolutely a gem to watch. We have the Innkeeper. The Innkeeper. As Mr. Nasty, the infamous Innkeeper, you give customers a simple promise. A stiff drink, soft bed, and a swift kick in the pants for those who start trouble. You won't sell large goods at the piers like other merchants in town. Instead, you'll offer room and board to tired adventurers after the markets close for the day. But space is limited and your customers are fussy. The last thing you want is folks yapping about bad experience. 
Yeah, folks yapping up a bad experience is the worst. So, this is going to be your own little game of Taverns of Tiefenthal. I, I don't know if it's all going to be like Taverns of Tiefenthal, so ignore anything I just said there. But this does, I mean, the whole game is absolutely beautiful to look at. Although this box, is there something underneath these sides? Nope. Something underneath this side? Nope. This box is just um, unnecessarily large for the contents you're getting here. Although we do have a miniature in here. So we're going to have a miniature, we have the contents here, we have that, and then more meeples over there. More beautiful custom meeples. So these boxes might be a little bit overwhelming in their size. I'm guessing I can get this all into the, the base game box when I try. So, anyways, back to DC Universe. So we watched Aquaman, we watched Aquaman again. Tonight I'm watching Birds of Prey for the first time, and then we'll be watching Wonder Woman 1984 for the first time as well. I haven't watched either of those. Don't spoil them for me, and then I'll get four comments being like, don't worry, we can't spoil them for you. They spoil themselves. So I know... I don't actually haven't heard much about Birds of Prey in general. I have I have heard mixed things about 1984. I've seen people who enjoyed it. I've seen people who are not impressed. I don't know about any of you, but if you haven't watched the trailers for the James Gunn Suicide Squad coming out, which I'm I'm looking forward to that because because James Gunn, why wouldn't I be? I am sad that Will Smith is not in it because I mean Will Smith and Harley Quinn are my favorite parts of Suicide Squad 1 and we are bringing back what's her name? Amanda Amanda something or other. Noller something. Waller? Waller? Waller sounds right. Merchants, the Dragon Rancher. This, by the way, is the box that my wife took a look at and said, I don't know what this game is, but I would like to be this Dragon Rancher. So I may be playing with an expansion as part of the base game. I can't imagine it's that messy to do so. Lots of insert stuff here. This is going to be like a bit of a homework assignment. I'm going to have to get this done. The Dragon Rancher. Dragons are the hottest steeds in demand, and you, Dwelma Drakethuth, have the market cornered. Honestly, with a name like Dwelma Drakethuth, what did you think she'd grow up to be? Have the market cornered. As a 7th generation dragon rancher, your last name is associated with the most sought after serpents in the five realms. I probably should have read that next sentence before I came up with my witty remark about how obviously she's a dragon keeper, because clearly. Yet it's not all glamorous. Young dragons are a handful to raise. They are fussy eaters, require lots of room to grow, and leave behind huge steaming piles. Do you have what it takes to maintain the ranch and the Drakethuth dragon's pedigree? So now it's just starting to sound like dragon pets, dealing with, uh, you know, pets and their needs and their poop piles. This basically just sounds like dragon pets all over again. Dragon pets is a game that I, I enjoyed but didn't love, didn't keep this one. It was a little bit, I felt that the theme, maybe it's just I thrown off by the theme because I expected a lighter game than it was, I think. And it was just very, very heavy and mathy by Vladish Fatil, if I'm not mistaken. Lots of math, lots of heaviness, very solid game, just not one that I ended up keeping long time ago. This is back to like my first years of gaming. 2013 maybe. We have a dragon thing, Majiggy. We have a bag. We have what may or may not be tokens of poop. I don't know what these are now. Now, I mean, the game set the expectation for me, so I don't know what they are. We have adorable dragons. Here we're going to be over here. Let's go ahead and punch these guys over here, because why not? Get a little bit of punching in. We got these dragons. They look, they look fun. They have numbers of 12 12 9 and 9 on them are they the same on both sides nope different so well i mean the same on both sides we have this bag over here the card the miniature all nicely wrapped up these boxes man i cannot get over these boxes they are definitely a complete waste of space as far as the contents i mean it's it's kind of necessary especially if you're going to sell them as well uh in terms of retail selling things does very much go by box size if you ever wanted to thank anyone for you know doing you a favor thank what's his name the raiders of the north sea guy I can't remember his name, but that guy, the Raiders of the North Sea guy, Shem, 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 something like that, Shem something, don't remember his name exactly, Shem something, Shem Phillips, Shem Phillips I think, but Raiders of the North Sea guy is someone that he made his boxes smaller because he basically wanted the price point to be lower and that is a factor, box size is a factor in price point uh, and so he wanted his games to be as accessible as possible and he basically made games that had a slightly lower MSRP by having a slightly smaller box size. Which is why if you've bought any of the Architects of the West Kingdom, Raiders of the North Sea, Paladins of the West Kingdom, any of those, if you've bought any of those at any point then you'll know that they are completely stuffed to the brim to an unsustainable degree. Merchant's Cove, the Oracle. The, whoa, that is not the Oracle I expected. What is back to that box top? Nope, that's the Oracle. Okay, this is the Oracle. I'm seeing that now. These hands over here, that's the Oracle. That kind of matches. Not what I expected. Oh, hey, look at this. This is the most complicated one we have yet. Whoa, whoa. Lots of rules there. 
As Hagatha, as Hagatha the Oracle, you deal in fortunes for the unfortunate. Read the stars, divine the future, and twist the fates in your attempts to part folks from their precious gold. Weary adventurers, visit your shop in search of hope and guidance. You offer this through lucky charms and horoscopes. But sometimes, you need to do a little voodoo, too. Just be careful not to let your dark dabblings or dirty dishes scare away too many honest customers. I've seen this Oracle. It's not the dark dabblings or the dirty dishes that are scaring anyone away. It's... It's her. She's got to work on her general hygiene and, and, I don't know, something there. Okay, more punch boards to go through. We'll have to figure all this out. This is like a lot of assembly in this game. It's like they wanted to make a toy and a star map and poly... Oh, no. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Are these polyomino tiles? Nope. Nope, no polyomino tiles. See, I saw this grid. I got excited. Polyominoes. I'm surprised it's not a polyomino middle game. I'm um, also... This has a pen, doesn't it? It does have a pen. You see... I could feel this, you can't feel it, because you're not you're not sitting here, I'm sitting here, but I could feel this, and I immediately felt that this board ha was different than other, you know, boards. But you know what that does mean? That means that I have a roll and write expansion mixed into Merchant's Cove, I am already much more interested. Not that I wasn't interested before, but, I mean, look at this, this looks basically like, if you've seen this before, that's going to look like the various uh, tokens or grid from Ganshan Clever, where you're going to mark up different numbers, this would be greater than that, greater than that, greater than that, greater than that. I wonder how they sequence the part where it's less than. It looks like they're rolling two dice, so over here we're rolling two dice. I'm just making this up. It's, fun, it's a fun idea for a series I have, by the way, where I want to do this series called rules explained poorly or something like that. By the way, I'm just going to go ahead. I hate small bags. My fingers can't get them. But I want to do a series called Rules Explained Poorly where I watch a round of gameplay from another channel and after watching one or two rounds of gameplay with no rules, I will then teach the game the way I perceived it. So I'm literally just going to make things up based on having just enough understanding to be dangerous but nowhere near enough understanding to be correct. So I would literally just like take this game over here and I would just make up rules as I go along. Watch watch me make up rules for this expansion as I go along. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to roll these dice. Whenever you roll those, you're going to mark this over here. Whenever you encounter one of these crates, you get to lower one of your prior symbols by one to whatever number you potentially want. When you unlock these skull symbols over here, you get to go up here, mark off these. When you have a set of three of those, you get to reset the track, setting your numbers wherever you want. Along the way, you'll be scratching off numbers in this part over here. As you scratch them off, you'll be able to unlock bonuses. As you cross them off, you use up your plus one and minus bonuses, which will enable you to further move up the track. Every time you have a set of three different crates, you will then collect a good. That's going to be one of the goods you can sell to the market in Merchant's Cove, which is important because you want to sell goods to market in Merchant's Cove. Along the way over here, there's going to be these cards over here because what's going to happen is once you unlock four in a row, every time you unlock four in a row, you get to make up a polyomino shape of any three of your choosing and mark that in the star grid in the top left corner. From there, when you have a full row and column cleared, you'll be able to completely erase this track, starting again, repeating the cycle to earn more goods so you can again sell them in Merchant's Cove. There's a few more other shorter details, such as the track in the bottom and these other bonuses over here. We'll get into that. I don't want to go into a full rules deep dive in this video. None of that's true. Not, not a single thing I just said is true, but it sounds good, right? I mean, it doesn't, it sounds decent. I'd probably do better after like watching a full round of play. The goal is to basically just make things up and be confident. Uh, you can get away with a lot in life if you're confident. So just, I mean, someone told me that once and they sounded confident, but so basically just, I got the pen over here, apparently missed that, but uh, a roll and write expansion, which with interesting rules, don't know if they totally made sense, those rules over there, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that works, but maybe someone can release an actual rule set that may or may not be better than the one I just made up on the spot, that actually develops into an expansion. Where are we up to? Uh, we are up to box sizes, Raiders of the North Sea. So Raiders of the North Sea, so that series. I recently got back Architects of the West Kingdom. One of the first reviews I've done on the channel, by the way, but I, I, I wanted to try it again. It's, it's been a long time since I tried it. I want to try it again. It's one of those ones that I, I like the mechanism in Architects of the West Kingdom quite a bit. I like the mechanism, and it's going to be art by the Miko as well, so we're going to use that as the common denominator as to why we're talking about it, even though we technically got there from box size. This is going to be the Secret Stash. Welcome to the Secret Stash. This box contains a treasure trove of goodies that will enhance your experience while visiting Merchant's Cove. The content contained here is modular, meaning that you can mix and match different parts of it to suit the unique tastes of your gaming group. For those playing solo, there are also challenges to increase the difficulty of the basic solo mode and scenario which offer thematically charged content supporting unique mechanics. And over here we have a, just a ton of different things. All these things just, you know, look like stuff that are interesting. Oh, look at that sad little warthog. Poor warthog. He just sat. I mean, look at him. Look at him. He just looks miserable. He looks like someone just didn't spend enough time with him. That is unfortunate. We have the solo scenarios over here. A whole chunk of solo scenarios to play. 
That should be fun for all you solo players who want to play this. I do play solo games. This is not the kind of game I would play solo unless I heard, oh, this is the best game ever solo. You should totally want to play it, which I would then play it. But most of the time I like to play games solo when they are either true solo or when they are cooperative games, which can be uh, easily adjusted to be solo. Some exceptions for me are going to be games like uh, Terraforming Mars is going to be the most notable exception in which I like that game solo, even though it's strictly speaking a competitive game. And so... That's going to be an unboxing of Merchant's Cove. Uh, going back to Raiders of the North Sea and whatnot, I got back Archives of the West Kingdom. I still have Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Paladins I played, I enjoyed it. Don't feel the need to get that one back. Even though, strictly speaking at the time, I enjoyed Paladins more than I did Architects, Paladins didn't feel as unique to me as Architects. I really enjoyed the mechanism in Architects in which you are, in which you are, you know, basically magnifying your actions as you place your workers. Really enjoyed that aspect. Uh, past that, I might get back Raiders of the North Sea 2. I think that one was fun enough that I think for the right crowd, the right accessibility, it's a game that might do well. Also a game I might get rid of again. I can see, I can, we'll see, we'll see. I do get games back occasionally to try them out when I have second thoughts. Sometimes they, they do well. Uh, Evidel and Raja of the Ganges, two of my favorite games, are going to be games that I got back because I had second thoughts. So second thoughts are a thing, but I usually let second thoughts sit there for a while. When I get rid of a game, it has to be on my general mind or whatever it is for a while before I get it back. That's going to be Merchant's Cove uh, unboxing, all the glorified goodness, just, I mean, I thought the minis would be larger, so I didn't really focus on them because they were smaller. But, I mean, the art looks great. The game looks great. The variability looks incredible. I mean, this is, I mean, think about it. Root had four expansions, four factions, and I'm obviously comparing it to Root. People will do that. And four factions, plus two more, plus two more. I think we're at eight factions currently before we get to the most recent Kickstarter. This one already has five in the base box and three in the expansions already. That's a decent amount of variability. The rules accessibility looks great. Now it's just a question of whether that gameplay delivers or not. Hopefully it does. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Don't forget to check out my interview with Rina. And this, by the way, is going to be a Patreon interview, meaning it's not exclusive to Patreon, but my Patreons basically came up with a topic and came up with the questions for the video. So those aren't my questions. They're their questions. Me just, I'm just the one asking them. And then, like I said, Quacklope has a Merchant's Cove unboxing as well on his channel. And I'm going to go finish up this video and then go tell him that I told you that because... In case he changes his plans, now he knows I just told everyone that there's an unboxing to go check out, so the pressure's on. Until next time, have a good one. Uh, blah, 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 words. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe, and have a good one. That was awkward. That was so awkward. See, usually I don't continue after. It's much more fun to continue when you have a guest. There's a handful of times I continue after when it's just me. But... When you're with other people, it's interesting. It's different. Different dynamic at play to like tell people, like to have people think you finish the video and then still keep going. When it's just yourself, it just borders on a little bit sadder, but still got good coffee.